Welcome to Thrive. Today, we're going to be talking about building a business community and how you can use community in your business uh, to really propel yourself and take yourself to the next level. Joining me to discuss this is Catherine Hunt. Welcome, Catherine. Hi, thanks, Brett. I'm so excited to be here today. It's, uh, it's, it's incredibly awesome to, to get to do this with you because I know behind the scenes in the partner community, you and I kind of bonded over the idea of, of building community. So, uh, boy, we have a lot to go over here. This is, this is incredibly exciting. I, I think a great place to start, um, community is kind of a, a nebulous topic in, in, in thought and not a lot of people really grasp it. Uh, and I think a lot of people have a lot of different versions of what community is for them. So perhaps a great place to start here is to define community. And for me, Catherine, I, I personally sort of uh, put the boundaries of community around the idea that it's a group of people uh, with a binding theme that are all unified towards a common goal. Uh, I think that's a great place to start. Is that sort of your interpretation of what community is as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a, a, a purpose, you know, a community embodies purpose. But one thing I want to add is that communities transpire physical location. So you can have a community that is geographically bound, but you can also have a community that's based on shared interests. And so as partners, it's really exciting. And as business owners, it's really exciting because the opportunity to create communities are very broad. And this is actually uh, one, and just so for those who are joining us, this is something that I do at Wix, but this is also something that you do for your clients in their day-to-day -day business. Is that correct? Oh, yes. So I love community. I love small business. I love local community and I love shared interest. And so um, I always get really excited when working with different clients, when their heart is to um, create these communities around something that they love. And so um, the creating communities with shared interests is, is always a target in my mind because it's so impactful for how a company can actually grow their business and grow their, their outreach. And so, yeah, I love to do it. Um, the communities that my company grow is involved in and, and helps facilitate are very diverse. Um, and so it's definitely a part of our strategy with how we work with clients. So uh, there's a lot of businesses that may or may not be thinking of community, uh, even as a, as a strategic avenue for them. And, and I guess a great place to start here is why, why do we, why should a business build one, Catherine? I mean, when, when you have these conversations with your clients, well, how do you sell them on it? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that everybody needs to understand is that community oftentimes, it is the foundation of wonderful relationships and connections with like-minded people. And so as a business owner, if you have the opportunity to take something that you are so passionate about and connect it with other people who are passionate about it or have shared similar interests, what happens is the sparks fly. And so why do you do this? Why would you even want to consider it? Well, first of all, you do it because it creates things like brand loyalty. Okay, when you develop a community, people start to build excitement around the things that you're doing. And so as a business, there's nothing better for marketing than being able to increase your exposure. And so it allows you also to have a say with how trends are developing within your particular industry. And so it really allows you to keep your hands and your feet on the ground for topics and subjects that matter most to your business. And so uh, one other thing, what better way to connect with your customers? I mean, you get, to, you get to experience the heart of your customers in a very real and tangible way when you develop communities. So you touched on something there and I think it's really important. A lot of, a lot of companies and businesses pay uh, an exorbitant amount of money to sort of know what the conversation is going on around them, their industry and what they're doing. And having a community that's centered to not necessarily to, to your focus and, and what your community is gives you an opportunity to be a part of the party and not just watching the party from the outside, right? Or exactly. paying people who went to the party to tell you what happened, right? So 
I think what you're talking about there makes a lot of sense in that light, right? Absolutely. I mean, and I, the thing is, is I'm, I'm always first connection, but I'm also second what makes sense from a business perspective. And strategically speaking, communities are very valuable in the terms of what effects it does for um, boosting things like sales, rapport, and um, just elements with, with growing your business. So it's, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And you know, another thing I'd like to add here when we, when we talk about why a business or an entity should, should engage in this is it's, it's a different mindset and it's a different, it's a different reach. You're really expanding your sphere of influence in a shoulder to shoulder way. And, and an example of that is, is the people who are excited about what's going on inside of your community, their conversations are actually going to, uh, or could potentially attract like-minded people to a product they knew or a service that they know nothing about or knew nothing about, right? Because they came a different way and it's a completely different experience, right? So it's, it's not like marketing where marketing has sort of like a message where here's the brand, here's what the brand's about. Community is completely different. It's the feeling, it's, it's, the, it's the interest, it's the shared connections. Do you agree? I do agree, but I also think that, I mean, I absolutely agree. Those shared connections become the foundation of amazing rapport and amazing outreach. Because imagine this, so if somebody is involved in your business's community, and just like you said, they're, they're connected, they're engaged, they see and experience value in your community, which is all very, very important. Well, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna talk to their friends they're going to talk to their, um, you know, their contacts, and they're going to tell them about this amazing community that they would, their their contacts would also find value in. And so the marketing itself happens by having good value to that community. And so it's tr it's attraction rather than promotion in a lot of ways. And so, but it's but it's being mindful that every every part that you invest in these communities, again, it's you know, done correctly, communities become just a, a, a um, house for bringing in so many new contacts and opportunities. So it's interesting. It's interesting there. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I like what you said there, attraction. And it's, it's, and just to sort of put like a, a little, a little hat on that, it's organic attraction, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly that. So this is why, businesses should build one. This is why it's, 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 it's valuable for a business or an entity to have a community. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I think, and you touched on it, and before we go to the next segment, which is sort of like, what are the fundamental building blocks of creating this? Mm -hmm. I wanna, there's one other thing that I think is really important. And, and let's, I want, let's touch just a little bit on, on trend spotting and how you can see mm -hmm. trends within uh, some of your customers or your community members. Yeah, so the beautiful thing about having um, a community is that, again, it's not just you. It's not you're not relying upon yourself and your team only. Um, as communities develop and start to thrive, you're going to notice that there are champions and there everybody takes their role and takes their spot and people start participating. And so realness happens at that point. And so when you think about how your ability to um, are you know define trends and see them coming it happens from your members naturally things will come up and you naturally are able to take the front end approach to it because you have the opportunity to connect closer than any other way than any other form of marketing um, and I would build on this and this isn't exactly what you're talking about but I want to I want to give another sort of tangible example of how it feels but a lot of times in business and you think of marketing, you know, you think of this like upper, this big cloud of marketing that goes out, sometimes targeted, sometimes less targeted. But with a community, it's like a warm blanket. OK, and it's like you're sitting in front of your clients with a cup of coffee and a warm blanket. You're able to have the connection and the conversation in a much more deeper way. And so that brings authentic opportunity, because when you connect with your clients that way, they too then feel comfortable and they're willing to tell you things that would otherwise traditional marketing outlets don't have the ability to do or reach. And so people, people, things happen when you do that. 
That's precisely that's precisely it, right? And and I think that kind of duck that that, that sort of ducktails right into if you're a product or, or if, you, if your company has a product or if it's a service, you can get direct feedback on your product, on your service, and it really helps you build what your community and your your most enthusiastic users what they want, and it mm -hmm. helps you build a roadmap. That's right. That's so. Right. I think we've absolutely identified value of community for small businesses uh, and companies. Let's let's take a deeper dive here, Catherine. Um, it's complicated. What are the, where do you start? So we've decided we want to do this. What are some of the fundamental building blocks? And I'm sure you 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 do this. You get asked this. I get asked this a lot. And I, I actually have like a process that I'll, I'll walk someone through. But one of the first things I think is the most important here is to identify two different things. Well, many things, but let's start with a couple prime things and, and we'll add to this. It's for me, Catherine, I think it is important to understand the purpose of the community and the goal of the community. And I think without those, you don't know what, you can't really sort of get your way through the woods. Um, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about purpose. Um, what is an example of a purpose, a purposeful community, and, and, and what might be a purpose there? Training. Okay. That's one. So training, to be able to build skills. So maybe you have an industry where um, it's highly technical. You can create a community around the training apart from your innovation, for example. So that, that might be a, a purpose to provide an outlet for training. Now, now, this is, this is awesome. Now I want you to strap that to a goal. Okay, so <laughs> you're putting me on the spot this here. Is, this, but, but this is, this is, this is the community <laughs> brain at work. So you've yeah. got a purpose. Got what's it. the goal of the community then? If, if the goal, yeah. if the purpose is, is training, what's the goal? The goal is to equip the members with the skills that they need to successfully use the products beyond. That's it. So, so to be successful with the product or move on with your endeavors. And it's this sort of a brainstorm, okay, that everybody who wants a community or, or, or thinks they need a community, need, you need to identify these things first yeah. or you're just spinning your wheels. And it may take you for lots and lots of failed activities in, in different spaces to understand that what you wanted to do didn't work because you weren't aligned to your purpose and goals. That's right. So take I, something, I take something very wide. So when you, and, and that's the thing, a lot of times when, when you talk to people about community or maybe you're sitting here on the other side of the camera and you're thinking, okay, this sounds really great, but it's abstract. Well, break it down, take something that's very wide. Don't cast a wide net, cast a narrow net uh, um, a sh you know, a narrow path because purpose and goals help you define that walkway and it keeps you on target. Um, otherwise, people get confused. People don't know what to expect. And if they don't know what to expect or they're not able to understand where they fit in, it, it, they, they won't participate. So it needs to be 100% super, agree. super simple. Keep it, keep it on target. So I 100% agree. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, I think another element here, uh, and you and I have had a back channel conversations about this, is, is that the, the purpose of the community should provide value to the members, right? And, and that value actually becomes your organic attraction, right? So we're kind of building on what we said. This is really great. Right. It, so, it's everything. I, I'm like, I could go crazy on the word value. Value is everything. Oh my gosh, please listen to me. Value, 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 value. And so what does that mean in very simple terms? That means that the people that are involved in your community have to feel like they get something from it. Okay. And so what are they going to get out of it? Now that doesn't have to be um, it, how, how people and what people get from a community can vary. Okay, so that maybe you, you can open up your, your net a little bit further on that, but it needs to be very clear and defined because it, people don't have time today to waste their time. And so people are going to get involved in stuff that benefits them, will help them regardless of what the, you know, the, the type of goal or purpose of the group is. And so it must benefit the user. I, I, would, I would expand on that just a touch, right? Because I think there's, uh, several tracks of value here. Mm -hmm. um, 
and let's let's talk about two let's talk about two distinct tracks and, and specifically for business business based communities or brand based communities. Mm -hmm. I think there's two distinct tracks. One track is to the brand. There's value being inside of a brand community. Perhaps uh, the brand supports users in the community. Okay, maybe that's one track of value which would be valuable. But there's another track, and the other track I think uh, could kind of runs in parallel to these business uh, uh, communities is what's the value of two members sitting next to each other? What's, what's the value of the members in a room or in a space where they can actually communicate? And when you're putting together your purpose and your goal and what you want to do, I think it's important to understand and think on those two tracks. What do you think? I mean, yeah, there, um, absolutely. And so I, I guess I don't really have a lot of feedback on that other than the fact that, you know, the value of connection is amazing and it's, and it's, it, it, it's just, it's so large. And so I, I think value can look differently. I mean, I really do. I think there, there's so much, but when you come into this, okay, so the big part the, and the most important, I guess, in my opinion, takeaway of this is that when you're identifying and you're thinking and creating a community or, or, or considering one for your organization, it's, you know, just to be able to define it um, and understand that it's not about the business itself who's hosting it. I mean, it obviously it helps your business, but it's about the members that are involved. And so you take your eyes off of yourself and you and, and you create the infrastructure because the sales come, okay? When, when you position it where you are serving others, when you position it where you're providing such a great opportunity for people to connect, to get whatever value that is, whether it's tangible or intangible, your your business is going to win okay your, your your business is definitely going to win i want to hug you yeah. because I, like like i think these conversations really just feed my soul you're what you're 100 you're 100 right um the community may be a part of the brand or, or might be a part of the company but it isn't about the company right mm -hmm. let, me, let me give you an example let me, let me break this down just a touch um we talked about, actually, let's go back to your previous example. I'll, I'll, I'll dovetail on that. Let's talk about training. Let's make it about training. The purpose is training and to gain skills or, 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 or the purpose of the community is to train and acquire skills on specific things. By the way, that's the hardest example. Just so it, you know. it, it is. For it is. Who's listening, that is actually the Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go from scratch. <laughs> let's, I'll, do a I'll do a different one. Let's say there's a, a, a business that actually manufactures um, a compost, a home compost setup. And okay. they sell a kit where you can go to your backyard and you set up a, a composting kit. All right. Okay. The, uh, the, the community that would spring up around that company is not going to be about how to build this particular kit. The community that would, that would organically grow here is, would be uh, waste champions or uh, compost champions, world savers. Uh, yes. That, that yes. that's, that's your, yes. so the skill or to tie it into the purpose, the purpose is to have homegrown composting, but the goal is actually to save the world, right? That's right. So, so it's not it, about the brand. It's but much to, bigger than the brand. Exactly, exactly. But, but the brands, and again, I, I say this to say that like, don't, I, I'm gonna throw in the, strate the strategic part of this is that it's bigger than the brand, but the brand benefits significantly. Of course, of course, mm -hmm. and and there's a and that's a whole another discussion, right? And, and and that's an interesting one because I yeah. partake in a lot of those, as you can imagine. It's it it, it exactly that, but you do want to be associated with it, um, of course, but uh, it doesn't mean it has to be about it. So that's right. Clarification. Mm -hmm. I, I also think, Catherine, when we're when we're spitballing or sort of developing the fundamental building blocks of building this community. I think it's also really important to know who your ideal member is and who is the person that you want to see in this space. Do you think that has an impact on some of the strategy? Absolutely. So, and you touched on goal and purpose, but to break it down in simple terms, I, I often say, identify your five W's, the who, what, when, where. Uh, and then specifically with your customers or the who's, create, I guess the technical term is an, an avatar, but really it's a person. Define your person. Think about who the ideal person is that would benefit from this group. Because remember, value is everything. 
your success in developing a community really correlates with the level of value that you provide your members. And so you have to absolutely be strategic. You have to know who will experience the best value. Therefore, you must define the person that's going to be the best and you gear your community towards that type of person. And it's not to say that you would close your community off to others because as communities grow and grow, your sphere of influence will, in, will increase. Um, and, and it becomes an opportunity to either create offsets from that original group or community or it allows you to create more, you know, different sections and so forth. But it's it has a lot to do with targeted marketing, okay? Understanding rather than catch, casting that wide net, understanding who specifically you're going to serve, and it ties to the value. So there there's a person behind your community, and that's who you you want to define. And and you're right. There's going to be a spectrum of users that will inhabit your community. Um, but in order to use community, and, and I agree with you here, in order to use it and leverage it to acquire who you want, you have to emphasize the value of that particular person. That doesn't mean that other people won't find that right. information valuable, right? So 100% agree with you on that. Um, I, th I think I think this is 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 very much in line with, 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 with our philosophy together. I mean, it's, it's really great. So we've talked a little bit about why a business could should use a community and and how why it's important and now we've talked a little bit about pre-planning strategizing and things that need to go into the in your mind before we start cooking and i think these are all really important mm -hmm. so let's say we've gone through the process we're, we're going to make some compost champions and this is the community we're going to make and we get it set up how do we how do we grow? And I, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. And actually, uh, Eric just asked this question uh, in, in the chat. And it's it's about platform. And a lot of people, and I'm, and I'm not saying this is you, Eric, but a lot of times I, have, I engage in conversations with people have, who have communities or want to have communities, and their mind starts at a platform. And he already has a community, but a lot of people think of platform first. And it's actually the last decision you should make because it needs to be attached to your goal of the community and the purpose you can't pick a place to go if you don't know how you want what you want your members to do because you need to know that first so you can match that up with uh the feature set of of a community uh, platform so uh, let's jump into let's jump into how we grow and i think platform is a great place to start what do you think Catherine? Well, platform is very important to, again, as you said, to um, understand and to pick right. And so you must look at your audience, which you just, as you just said. So um, depending upon your specific audience, you can research and you can look into exactly what the general habits are. What are they used to using? What do they feel comfortable in? Are they, you know, do they, are they technologically um, able do they, is there, um, do they struggle? You know, what are they currently, currently using now? How can you make it um, seamless for them to get involved? Are they website based? Are they like, so you, you have to understand your client first or your targeted audience first. And then after you understand that, you know, there are many different options for picking platforms. And ultimately your goal to pick that is based on your client. And so some clients may choose things like Facebook groups. Some, um, I, my clients, we, we are using Wix Forum and creating communities with backend member portals directly on their websites. And so our goal is always to utilize their websites as the home base for transferring information. Right, and, and, so, and the partner community is, is also based on exactly the same, exactly the same platform you're discussing. Yeah. And so I, I personally, and this is not, this is, this is, this is just how it is, but I personally believe, and I, as I work with my clients, we try to keep as many things um, in terms of our own intellectual property in-house. And so anytime that you use a, um, something that is away from their own website or away from something that they own, um, you know, there is. I don't know. I it, there's benefit from keeping it in house if it's something that is feasible for your audience, and so we use a lot of we use their websites for most of them. 
but and that also kind of ties into the goal too, right? Because, <laughs> and and I, and I and I obviously don't want to to have say any disparaging remarks around any platform. But if one of your goals is to have organic growth from your members, then you you're going to want their conversations to be indexed by Google or found. Right. So, so it doesn't do any good if you have an incredibly amazing answer somewhere that's private that can't be crawled. Right. So mm -hmm. you need to think of these things, but, but there are some groups where you want those conversations private and you don't want them crawled. So this kind of goes into your, into, into, into before, again, choosing your goal before you move into your platform. So I would agree with you on that. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's important to take your time, take your time and, you know, and really think about the pros and the cons because there are pros and cons to everything. But uh, again, the position that we take as a company and as an organization and when I'm working with clients, it always comes to if I have the ability or my clients have the ability to um, optimize that flow of information, which again, we're talking crawled pages on their website. We're talking um, just managing that data themselves. That is always my first choice rather than taking the community offsite, um, you know, in another place. So I can, I can agree to that. Mm -hmm. I can completely agree to that. And I, I think everybody, everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but again, clearly you have, you know, you're, you're, you're more advanced and, and that's why your clients utilize you and your skills because you can help navigate these, these, these pitfalls, right? Or yeah. goals, you help align them to the goals. So something else I think that is important. So for those of you who are joining us, we're talking about growing communities now. We've talked about why build one, uh, the fundamental building blocks. Now we're sort of talking about how to actually do it, how to grow it. Mm -hmm. um, we just discussed platform just a touch. Um, and before we move off the platform, I'll actually touch on Eric's question here. He has a platform that exists in one place or his community that exists in one place. And he's actually, his question was more along the lines of how do you migrate uh, without getting your users and members frustrated? And uh, Eric, I'll tell you, there's probably no way, <laughs> no one wants to change homes. Um, but, but I will tell you, if there's a way to import your member list, that helps. Catherine, do you have any tips on that? My tips would be create excitement about why you're moving. And so the thing is, is, I mean, I would assume that your reason for moving and changing directions is going to bring value to your members. There's got to be a reason. And so oftentimes having transparent communication, build excitement yeah, about it yeah. rather than being like, oh man, you got to sign up on this thing because we're not going to use this thing anymore. Get, get excited about it and say that, you know, as a member of our Save the World community, we are so excited about you all. We care so much about you. So guess what? We've got a gift. We're doing things in a new and exciting way. Make sure you join in here. And then my other tip, would be give yourself time for the transition. And so don't go from full on to full off. Make sure that you have a, a transitional period of time. At my initial number that's coming to my head is probably at least 90 days, but you need to be mindful of this. Start the process, get people over, and you can continue to communicate that process to help people transition rather than go from lights on to lights off. You don't right. want to do that. A, pa a parallel, a parallel migration is absolutely, yeah. is, is absolutely key. Having, having two communities or the same community, two different places for a period of time, isn't going to really hurt you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually will give you a leg up in the, in the, in towards the end, because when you actually do, if you do choose to close the old, the old place, you'll already have content and ac excitement and activity of whatever's happening over here. And, just to sort of finalize the platform conversation, let's go back to our compost champions. Yeah. Now, now, Catherine, I'm sure this community exists somewhere, but in my mind, We're starting what, it, if not. <laughs> I, while you were talking, I just started up uh, my Wix app and I already made it. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I think, I think one of the things that they would probably share, I think what would be the, the piece of, of content that they share a lot would probably be pictures of their setups at home. Mm -hmm. Right. I think yeah. that's probably one of the pieces there. So thinking of a platform there, the number one thing I would need yeah. is a photo gallery where community members can contribute to or a place mm -hmm. for them to upload pictures, right? It's, right. And I'm just keeping this in, 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 our, in our theme here, Kath, and I'm trying to. 
Okay, so that's platform talk. Let's jump yep. to let's jump to the nitty gritty. How do we cultivate this? We've got some people. Some people have have found their way into our uh, community of compost champions. How how do we nurture them? How do we cultivate them? Yeah, I got a lot to say about this one. <laughs> Because it, because honestly, it takes the idea behind. So you, you've done the legwork. You've you have um, defined your purpose. You've created goals. You've gotten your uh, you know some initial people involved in this community. Well, what do you do next? Well, what do you do next is you start to contribute. Okay. Initially, when you first start a community, your role is going to be prominent. But I want you to hear me. It's going to be prominent, not dominant. Okay. And what what do I mean by that? Is that you know, you're a facilitator. Your community cannot thrive if you, it is only your voice. And so your goal, and when you first start, is to start to get interaction, start to have your members participate. How can you do that? You can ask questions, stimulate conversation. You can provide certain outlets for your members to shine. And so let me give you an example now of our, um, uh, when we were talking about world savers, world savers. Compost champions. <laughs> okay, I'm messing the name up. Compost champions. World savers. I'm adding that in there too. No. <laughs> That's much better, right? It, it, it works. Um, but let's talk about that one. So let, we just started that. Okay, let me use this as an example. Well, you have, okay, so let's say you have your, your a collectively group of members. Well, how do you stimulate conversations? maybe a contest, maybe having, maybe you can create, um, you know, some initial things on, all right, this week, we're going to highlight, you know, let's highlight all of our new, you know, your systems, post a picture of your system. Okay, so that then immediately goes from you have facilitated a conversation to now you're inviting your, your community in to do it. And once people start participating, and you start, so again, you're facilitating it initially, and then people are, are, um, are starting to participate, and you want to feed into that involvement, okay? And so things like cultivating comments, writing comments, um, asking questions, all of those things stimulate conversation, okay? And when you do that, it goes, and this is, this is big, highlight this, underline this, hear me on this, it goes from me to we, and that's what your goal is. Is so when you when you're doing this again, you you have to stimulate those conversations, but you must be mindful that it's not your voice; it's everybody's voice that makes it successful. So, I 100% uh, underline everything you just said with a highlighter, yellow. I threw some paint on the wall. Everything. I'm 100% behind that, right? Because it's. And, and to take it to a psychological level, mm -hmm. it's actually to engage truly. If you make it personal, it's fire. Mm -hmm. That's what's actually going to really bring the fire is when it's personal. Show us your backyard. Show mm -hmm. us your setup. You, mm -hmm. you uh, compost champion world saver. Mm -hmm. um, what show do you us do when this happens? What do you do? Tell us how you solve this problem. Is, is it possible to, what's the hardest thing you figured out how to actually compost in your backyard? Yeah. Uh, what's your, what do you involve your community? What are some community projects you're working on? And that conversation right there is fire because not only is it going to engage the community, but it's going to give them ideas to do that in their neighborhoods, right? So you have to think strategically about how you engage and what the goal of your community is. Yeah. And let me, let me add a little icing onto the cake too. I like icing. So at, I know, right? So as, as you're doing this and as you're communicating and, and as your, your community starts to blossom, you're going to notice that people, people start to blossom in that, okay? And remember, your goal is never, it's not me, it's we. And so you're going to notice people, I, I like to call them the champions. So you're going to notice people that have voices that um, naturally people gravitate towards. They're, they're leaders in your community. And, and there's a ton of other roles as well. You're going to have the people, I like to think of them as the glue, the people that are always there, you know, they're steady, they're consistent, they're participating. Those, the glue is very, very important to a healthy community. And so start to open your eyes 
to the wonderful people that are involved in your community and, and the roles that they take to develop it. And additionally, even though your voice can be and, 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 and should become quieter, you also have the ability to create wonderful, I don't want to say incentive because it's not about like, hey, let's get a birthday hat on here. Although badges, badges are helpful, badges are great. But you, I mean, even on a personal basis, encouraging encouraging those that are putting themselves out there that are contributing you know it's it's like a management job that's unofficial you know and so you you really have the opportunity to be able to develop amazing people that become voices in your community as well and and really that's the last part of it because once your community is healthy once your community is again is moving and grooving and growing you know you, it's not about necessarily stepping back and let you know watching the dreams happen, but it's it's about letting the momentum build, which will happen organically at that point. And and it's also important to a couple things here. I want to add to that because you're you're spot on. As you start to collect your community champions, it instead of you never really step away from your baby, right? It will always need a guiding hand here and there. Right. Uh, right. But, but as it does develop its momentum, if you don't let it move in the space it wants to move, then, then you're doing a disservice to your own creation. And I think, I think a lot of young community managers or people who start community, they can make that mistake where it, it's going in a space uh, they don't want it to be and it really should organically move there if it's in line with your purpose and goals, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, it's, 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 it's tough. And it's a great, it's a great idea. Also, I would recommend once you find your champions, create a special chat or a special way for your champions to reach you, to reach your company that's outside of the normal channel. So they feel welcomed, included, and much more involved. And if you do that, then your day to day as, as the uh, creator of this entity really becomes much more shoulder to shoulder with them. And they become your front lines. Doesn't mean you don't exist in the that's space, right. but you go shoulder to shoulder with them. Mm -hmm. And they, they, then they become your, your, your front lines. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's exactly that. And it's funny that communities, no matter what type of community it is, they all sort of follow the same flow and evolution cycle. Right. So Absolutely. I think that's interesting. And I, I love the, I love the me to we, uh, mm -hmm. I, I told you that earlier. I, I, that's a great, that's a great idea that I, it's, it's so much more purposeful and, and to the point and more, uh, articulate than I am. Mine's a long paragraph of what's going to happen, <laughs> but it's great. So, so we've talked about platforms. Um, we talked a little bit about cultivating some things you can do, how to sort of kick it off. Mm -hmm. And I think where there were some great points there. And one of the last things we talked about here was moving from me to we, finding the champions and, and really heralding their wishes and, and, and being shoulder to shoulder with them. Mm -hmm. And I like a couple guide rules that we talked about. Making it about the community members, not so much as the brand. Mm -hmm. I think that was like an underline. I think if there's a takeaway here, that's a really good one. Mm -hmm. And looking for the champions, finding them and giving them special nurturing. You know, a lot of people do this and they do it. And then they actually take those champions and they leverage them. Like to, in my mind, that takes me towards ambassador style programs. And a lot of uh, companies do this. Um, it, what's your thought on that, Catherine? You want to chime in? Well, I think I think that it, it there is value in certain circumstances to be mindful of that. And, and again, it's very much specific to the community, specific to the goals in order to determine. Um, but I, so, and this kind of touches on something that you were saying when we were talking about underlining it, that it's not about the business, it's about the community. Basically what, let me put this in very simple terms. Don't use your community to push your products. Like it's not a sales call. Your sales happen because of the incredible community that is developed that you have with your brand. Does that make sense? And so I, I just felt really, I felt like it was important to, to just like, clarify that in the most basic level. And so back, back to, I mean, I, I am a, a grow. We are a sales building organization. That's why people hire us. And so having ambassadors being mindful and using our communities to the most strategic way is absolutely on the front mind of, of what we do. But 
it does never and it never trumps authentic connection and so that's the thing that you have to understand when you're trying to figure out well do we have ambassadors do we have this or that whether you give somebody a title or not if your community is strong they are going to be an advocate for you and your company they will do it naturally same with volunteers volunteers are amazing but uh so so again title or no title that's less that I don't I don't know I don't think that's um, necessarily a sticking point, but just understanding that again every done right they're going to advocate for you and in some ways by helping boost or creating programs around that advocacy you may see a surge in activity and sales, but it should never come before pure connection and so if anything that you do in that community separates, severs, makes people uncomfortable, create something where they feel like it's not authentic, then, you know, that's a, it's a no-go. 100%. And let's keep it on theme here, okay? Mm -hmm. We are compost champions, <laughs> right? We are warriors of the world. Yeah, right? I like that. I like that name, by the way. I like that. I so, feel I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, so, so let's bring that in. Let, let, let's have an example of how a community champion could be could be leveraged in the right way, and it could be a conservation, um, a conservation uh, meeting or something like that, where it's not about your brand, but as our brand community, we're going to, as a surprise, reward our top five people who've contributed, and we're sending you to this convention because we know this is what you love, and mm -hmm. we're going to give you a shirt that says "Compost Warriors," and on the back it's going to be uh, the name of the company, but Again, that's a great example of how you can leverage it and reward them and nurture them and still perpetuate the idea that we're saving the world. Exactly. Exactly. And I think I think that's the strategy. And 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 I have a lot of conversation with with conversations with businesses and companies that don't that that it, it's it's tricky for them. They may be really really good at marketing, but it's tricky to sort of know how to leverage the community, how when not to leverage the community, when it's sort of uh, vampiric and, and when it's nurturing and it, there's a fine line there's a very fine line between that and I love yeah. that you pointed that out it's a very fine line and it's hard it's hard for a lot of people to understand that 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 you truly can impact a person to the point that they are going to make new purchases when you provide that value without even saying will you buy this buy this because you do, it doesn't it doesn't work that way and so a community is a great it's a great example of that it's that it's being able to position your company in a favorable way where you're present but not overarching and and as a result of that people feel comfortable for, to you it's again it's that warm hug so when you get a warm you know you have a warm blanket around you that conversation that intimate conversation and your brand is always present but is not shoved in your face you'll always remember that you'll always connect to that brand. And so when it comes time for purchasing and comes time for those sales to happen, it will happen. Um, it will happen that way because they, they've built that rapport with you. 100%, 100%. Uh, I, love, I, just, I just love this conversation. I, I, we have to stop at some point, but I just don't yeah. know if I want to, Catherine. <laughs> so I know so, we, we, we could, we could, we could talk about this all day. You and me, this is, this is a fun thing. This is our jam. This is our jam. <laughs> So another thing that I, we were talking about growing, one of the things that I think that's, that's a really important ingredient, and I, I'm asked this a lot, I'm sure you are too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's really important to have someone that, that is your community leader, that's your engine. And, and again, I'm gonna talk just a touch what you talked about earlier, where it's important to not make it about that person or about the brand, but they know how to make it about the members. Mm -hmm. And I think for anybody wanting to start this out, I think there are a few things that you really must keep centered. One, you need to be passionate about what you're doing mm -hmm. and authentic. You need to really, really, really want to talk to these people every day. Mm -hmm. Like if it's not in your blood, if you don't want to do it, it's going to be obvious and your, your responses are going to be lackluster. And I want to remind everybody that in online communities and in communities in general, lackluster responses are seen by everyone. So you can't have a bad day. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And I, t I joke, I tell that to my team all the time. We can't have a bad day. Have the passion. You need to be patient. You're going to repeat yourself. 
You need to be very patient and always respectful. What's a tip, Captain, outside of some of those, what would you like to add to that for someone starting out? Time to grind. That's what I would say. That it takes work. I mean, we there's tons of benefit to this, but it does take work and it takes involvement. And so you have to be committed to do the deal. You have to be committed to walk through that process. Communities do not blossom overnight, rarely. Um, I mean, I guess they can in, in some regard, but in most cases, slow and steady growth forward is going to have the greatest amount of lasting ability rather than surges and gone. And so you have to be willing to put the time in. And when you do that, you're bound to have just amazing, amazing, wonderful benefit. I completely, I completely agree. Um, community is definitely my lifeblood and it's definitely, it's definitely yours as well. Mm -hmm. So this has been really interesting. The, the, I think the one thing I would add, um, one of, one of, I think one of my life lessons is pay very close attention to your community's lingo, mm -hmm. how, how they communicate with one another and, and what, me, in, in what medium in which ways they communicate and what's their sort of token of communication. So for example, let's go back to our, our, our compost warriors, world savers. I, theoretically, if I were spitballing this, Catherine, I would bet their, I, I would be willing to bet that their token of, of, of lingo communication would be photos of their com, of their home compost setups and and, mm -hmm. and 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 the flow, right? I would I would bet that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes communities come together and they do things that you didn't expect, mm -hmm. and that's actually quite good because you can actually build upon that and focusing on what they're actually doing. Is, is like I'm going back to this because this is a great way to end this too. It goes back to the value of the community and at least on the track of community or person to person, right? And mm -hmm. if you can focus on what they're doing, then that actually becomes the landscape and the retail space for your community site. And that's what you need to present to the first for the next person that lands on your site that's not on the community that's attracted, because if you can if you can configure it this way, this is very strategic, because a person that doesn't know anything about you, your community, what you're about, can immediately see what type of contributions they can contribute to and participate in and what value they're going to get out of this community. Mm -hmm. And it's an unspoken thing if your real estate is set up correctly, right? Absolutely. So it's, and it's a, still, I'm tying it back into the goal here of finding that ideal member. That's right. That's right. Well said. I tied that back into the platform too, because I, that is like a hot button item that I know everybody wants, Like, but we start there and it's actually where we, mm -hmm. where we end. Okay. Catherine, is there anything else you want to, to add? You compost warrior, world saver, <laughs> community champion? We're doing this. I'm getting the domain. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet it's out there. As soon as this is over, I'm, I'm going to go Google and see you're if gonna, it is. You're going to get the call. You're going to get the call. No, I, I think we've, honestly, I think we've talked about, talked about it a lot. I mean, business owners, if you are dealing with coaching, consulting, amazing opportunity for community, um, those that are in specialized industries, amazing opportunities for community. Um, basically, those industries that are in entertainment, amazing opportunity for industry or for, for community. I mean, are you catching what I'm throwing here? There's, it's a lot. It's a lot of opportunity. Much, there is a lot of opportunity. And so if you're sitting here and you're, you know, you're listening to this, bottom line is, is take a look at your business. Take a look at those customers that you serve. What and how can you connect them? Think about connection, connection first, and your community can develop and flourish. And it's it is a wonderful journey. It's a wonderful thing. And I, I think I have to throw my, my buzzword out here. Um, it's about making it personal too. That's right. That's right. Those, those are, those are, those are uh, my buzzwords here inside of Wix. So Catherine, is, is it, how can someone reach you? Can you, do you want to drop your website in case uh, yeah. somebody wants to yeah. reach out? 
Absolutely. So you can reach out growingsales.com. That is our company, Grow. Um, myself and my team, we have an amazing team that just loves to serve our clients. I like to say we like to take the heart of a customer and translate that into sales. We just, we get in the trenches with our customers and we really just create some amazing solutions. So um, definitely check us out. We would love, I would love to talk to you a little, you know, learn more about what you're trying to do. But, um, you know, this, the, the journey of community is an amazing thing. It is. And if you let it, it's life changing. Mm -hmm. It's life changing if you let it. And uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's, it's, it's what I do. Don't tell anybody this. It's what I would do no matter what, right? I do it for free <laughs> because I'm, I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so good. So Benjamin, that's a good question. And after this, one of the things that I actually want to do is sort of summarize our conversation. And I, I will, I will probably write a blog on this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, oh, let's see, let's see, Catherine. I have some skill sets and, and, and wordsmithing is not one of them. <laughs> yeah, I will help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Catherine, I want to say thanks to, for coming. And, and, and if it's possible, I might, if you're, if you'll be available, I might make a post in the partner community forum. And maybe if you want to, if people come and ask questions, you and I can sort of jump in and, and answer questions. That would be awesome. I would love to. That sounds amazing. Okay. So thank you, Catherine. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, Benjamin, message me if you, if you want to, it, that may be really interesting. Message me if you, uh, on the forum, if you want to. So thanks, Catherine. Thanks for being here. Everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, this Bye. was awesome. Thank Have you. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.